From around the globe, it's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, the European show, which of course for 2020 is virtual. Always love when we get to talk to the, the practitioners as well as uh, many of them heavily involved in what happens at the CNCF in all these open source communities. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest, Katie Gamanji. Uh, she is a uh, cloud platform engineer with American Express and she's also a member of the CNCF's TOC, which is the Technical Oversight Committee. Katie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. I'm quite excited to be here. Excellent. Well, you you are, as I mentioned, you're part of the TOC. You also present at the show. Uh, last year, uh, you presented at, at one of the KubeCon shows, and, and this year, uh, as I mentioned, you're with American Express now. I believe it was Condé Nast. Um, you, you shared some of the, the journey along those lines. Maybe for our audience, give us a little bit about you know, your background and what's gotten you involved in you know, some of these projects and, and communities. Absolutely. Oh, such a good question. I can talk forever about that my passion about cloud native. So uh, my name is Katie Gamanji and I am one of the cloud platform engineer for American Express. I've joined American Express around five months ago and I am part of the team that aims to transform the current platform by embracing the cloud native principles and making the best use of the open source tools. As mentioned previously, I've been working for Condé Nast. I've been in that role for almost two years. And as part of that role, we aim to create a centralized, globally distributed platform that had Kubernetes as a centerpiece. And that was the role which actually got me involved more into the cloud native tooling. And I've been um, exploring them quite heavily since then. And that's why I wanted to get more, in terms of more contribution to the community. I've been doing that previously through different talks and actually writing blog posts on different, giving different guides on how to start using some of the tooling. However, this year I decided to apply for a TOC and I've been elected as a TOC from the end user perspective. So I'm representing pretty much the overview of what end users think that the next direction should be within the cloud native landscape. And for the last, actually for the past five months, I've been on the TOC for the CNCF and uh, it's only 11 of us and we are in charge to make sure that we can guide and set this technical vision for the, CN for the CNCF landscape. Yeah, Katie, I definitely want to talk about the TOC piece, but I want to back up a little bit and you, you talked about some of the tooling, you talked about the community. Help me understand a little bit you know, from a business standpoint, you know, why, you know, Condé Nast, American Express, you know, looking towards using, you know, Kubernetes and all of these open source toolings, what was, you know, the, the charter, the challenge put before them uh, that, that felt that doing things this new way would help them? I think this actually goes a couple of years back. Uh, in my previous role before Condé Nast, I was in a team which aimed to provision infrastructure but it was in a more, how can I say, old fashioned manner. We had to configure our data centers um, manually, configure the VMs and processes. We had a piece of automation, but at the time, this was maybe three years ago, I started to look into Kubernetes and it was still baby steps. Like there was interest from the community and I really wanted to kind of get my hands on it more. And when I was looking for a role, which was at Condé Nast, I was looking for something which aimed to introduce containers in the entire infrastructure. And I think Condé Nast actually was very appealing as a role because not many expect for a media company to invest in technology and actually the underlying infrastructure. So from that perspective, I thought it's actually quite a good use case to change this perspective in the community. As well with uh, Condé Nast, it was a very international company. We had different business units around the, the world. All of them had different tech stacks. So the challenge itself, how do we unify that? How do we centralize the deployment process of the application and serving our request, but at the same time, have this uh, individualized layer for every single market to still personalize their content. So it was a very good project, I think, for me to further go into the cloud native tooling and actually definitely proved to be the right role for that. And currently I am uh, in a different role. It's actually a financial company, but I think this is my personal challenge. I think there is a perception of financial companies moving towards modernization of their infrastructure, but it's still going quite slowly. 
And I think my personal challenge in, in this perspective is to make sure that actually fintech is a thing, but fintech in cloud native, actually using open source tooling is possible. Obviously, we can transition that uh, to some of the secondary base, maybe not the core base of the business, but this transition, actually getting the change going is the most important bit. Once it actually goes, it's just uh, a boulder like downhill, which is going to take everything around and refactoring bit by bit. Yeah, Katie, you brought up a really important point. Uh, you know, in today's world, especially you know this year, twenty twenty, with the global pandemic going on, being able to react fast is so important, regardless of what industry you're in. Um, you, you talked about in your previous role, you had a global rollout uh, to work across a lot of environments. Uh, help us understand a little bit uh, underneath the covers. Uh, you, you know, what uh, using this tool set, how does this help you move faster? How does it, you know, in some ways, unify teams uh, re regardless of uh, what, what challenges they have? I think for us, at least at Condé Nast, it was quite important to have one platform. So actually centralized all of our requirements, actually cover all our requirements and translate them in, within the platform. So what I actually wanted was to have Kubernetes uh, as the gravitational point. Now, with Kubernetes, we'd have some of the main functionalities such as portability or flexibility. We'll be able to scale to um, very easily without actually with minimal effort. But more importantly, we'll be able to transport our platform to different regions. So to actually replicate the entire tech, tech stack. So once we have this centralized platform, it was very easy for us to distribute them, for example, in regions across the US. And we there at that time I was working there at least, uh, there was an intention or a strategy to replicate the tech stack in, in China. And that'll be very easy because with Kubernetes, you just have this lift and shift capabilities. As long as you have VMs, you'll be able to well, compute, you'll be able to run um, the entire Condé Nast tech stack. So that was a very a big an, an advantage kind of big point for us to move to Kubernetes. Whilst I think in American Express, the strategy is completely different. Um, it's still a lot of heritage uh, infrastructure we have at the moment. There is still, actually we are running on Kubernetes, there is, um, but the provider itself is OpenShift. This proven to be showcasing some of the issues for us moving forward. And we'd like to transition to a more native way to run Kubernetes. And this is potentially means um, but we haven't finalized the decision yet, but it might be using a public cloud provider, or it might be the case of actually running Kubernetes um, self-service. So we're actually going to maintain our clusters. This is not defined, but the underlying idea is we want a more um, kind of um, modern version of Kubernetes or managing Kubernetes moving forward. So this is one of the strategies. But I think within American Express, the main underlying um, idea is that we really want to inner source most of the configuration. Historically, we had different uh, contractors and vendors working on our bits and pieces. We would like to actually get all of this in house and have a centralized way to manage our infrastructure. So this is the underlying project, which I think is going to take a while. But again, there is an intention to include cloud native tooling and technologies. And I think this is a very healthy thinking in terms of technology. Now, Katie, you actually you highlighted two really important topics that that we've seen out there. Number one is exactly where my infrastructure is. Uh, it's going to change, and I, I don't need to think about it. So you talked about public cloud data centers that might change in the future. And number two, making sure that you have the skill set in house is something we definitely learned from the, the outsourcing trends of the past. Was when things need to be changed, if I had to rely on someone else, it became very difficult. So if, if, if you're leveraging Kubernetes uh, and you have the developer chops to be able to respond to the business in an agile way, you're going to be much more ready to be able to handle what, whatever happens in the future. Um, so Precisely. important. So um, I, I want, want to switch, uh, talk a little bit about you know, your TOC work uh, presenting at, at the show. Um, it's great to see you know companies enabling their employees to participate uh, in this sort of thing. Uh, you know, help me understand how much for kind of you personally, and you know what what is what is the support that you get from uh, you know your your last job, your current job, uh, to participate in these you know open source projects and communities. Right, I think 
both of the companies, Condé Nast and American Express, they're quite interested in being part of the cloud native community. With Condé Nast, they're actually part of the end users. Um, with American Express, I think there is um, a thinking to actually join the end user community. So this might be something which will happen in the future. Can I guarantee, but I'm hoping this is going to be, again, one of my personal challenges, making sure we get um, uh, in the community and share some of our use cases. But, um, but for now, I think both of the companies actually understand the value of being part of actually using open source, but more importantly, understanding how other companies use that. Not one use case, especially when it comes to Kubernetes, not one Kubernetes platform is going to be the same. There's always going to be different underlying technologies that plug in into it. There's going to always going to be different ways to use different tooling. And having this concentrated community and source of information, I think the companies actually understand the value in that and contributing to that. So I think this is something which I've been quite passionate about to actually understand some of these trends, to understand how some of the tooling are used and if there is an actual hope for a project or it's something which actually specializes into a very minimal kind of niche problem and is going to be useful for maybe one or two three companies depends so i think this is uh something i've been passionate about and i i've actually had a support throughout in my previous company in current company i have very strong support from my higher ups to actually contribute more and be part of the uh, of the end user community and as such be a toc as well which comes with a bunch of responsibilities as well um but i think in terms of the, the support definitely i had this, the necessary support all the way through for which i'm quite thankful Katie, you mentioned some of your passions. I, I know from what I've read online uh, that, that you're passionate about some of the, the tooling there, and that's uh, some of what you're sharing through your presentation. So, uh, love if you could, you know, share a little bit about uh, what, what you'll be talking about uh, at the, the KubeCon Europe show uh, right now, and uh, you know, any, any other the kind of tools that are getting you know your time and attention these days. So I think lately I've been exploring Cluster API, the new release. I've been waiting for new release for actually, everyone has been waiting for the new release for a couple of months. Now we actually have V1 Alpha 3 endpoint with some of the cool features such as manage control planes for a cluster. Uh, and the second tool uh, or set of tools I'm looking lately are uh, the ones which concentrate on the GitOps model. So during the session at KubeCon, in uh, Europe this year. I will be presenting Cluster API, a guide on how to get started. So an overview of all the components necessary to create your own clusters in different cloud providers as well. But I will crown that presentation by delivering a demo of how can you provision your cluster with GitOps. And I'm gonna use Argo CD at the moment. And the end result is gonna be provisioning your cluster in AWS by having maybe one click, and you have a cluster with three masters, maybe five nodes, and you just wait. Pretty much you can have your coffee while your cluster is provisioning. But more importantly with Cluster API, um, again, we have reusable manifest, which will allow us to have this one interface to integrate with different cloud providers. So we actually have this inter interoperability of manifests across different cloud providers. So look forward to that. Excellent. Katie, last question I have for you. What advice would you give your peers? You know, where, where, do, where do you see need for, for more participation as people that are, you know, getting into this environment? Uh, to try, where, where, where do you think they can help? Oh, such a good question. I think contribution is necessary in most of the SIGs in the Kubernetes community. So I think it depends on the passion everyone has, if they quite passionate about the networking or storage or even service mesh, there is going to be a group of people that have the same passion and interest as you. So please reach out and contribute. I think another thing, actually, another thing I would like to, to mention, you don't necessarily need to be an active coder to be part of the SIGs or to be part of the cloud native. Because being in technology, of course, it's an advantage. However, most of the ideas and actually making sure that we tailor or actually have use case, cover use cases for different tooling comes from a diverse user base as well. So if you have an interest, I think that's gonna be a very good engine for to further um, kind of enable, enable different ideas within the SIGs. Um, so I, I wouldn't be able to recommend a particular project. I think this is very specific to everyone's daily role, I, I would assume. Um, 
but yeah, I think within the CNCF, we have a collection of SIGs for which you pretty much would find a place for yourself and your skills. Excellent. Well, Katie, thank you so much for sharing your journey and participating uh, so actively in the communities. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. All right, and stay tuned. Lots more coverage from KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Europe 2020 Virtual Edition. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching The Cube.